All right, guys, these bikes showed up and I just barely heard Mike's T-Rex pull up. So I'm suspecting he's coming through the door. Let's see. What do you think? Those are cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ron, why isn't it already done? I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, these hanging underneath Scrappy is going to be so fun. So, uh, darn them, they didn't make an orange, but red's close enough. Ron's is black. But this is full suspension, full electric, fast, like 70 some odd mile range. I feel like I'm giving a pitch on these. No, they didn't sponsor me. Hey, segue. We're gonna put these together, play with them for a bit. Then we'll have to design and model up the brackets, the hook to the bracket that's already on Scrappy. Get this sucker in the back country. Woo back to work. <laughs> Get physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. <laughs> Here's our motorcycles. They're all put together. We haven't even taken them out and ridden them yet. <laughs> They're still new. Before we even rode them, we wanted to see how hard it's gonna be to tie them up. And uh, everything's checking out perfect. I went ahead and hung the bike to find its center of mass, where its moment arm, its pivot is, and it's actually right there at that bolt, which is great because if I take this up and hang the heaviest part or the main part of the air, the motorcycle right where I designed it to go, um, and then connect the back, I'm almost exactly on my center of lift on the wing so that when I put the motorcycles on, I'm not shifting my weight forward and back. So it's gonna act the same, it's just gonna carry more weight. So I'm gonna uh, get that marked out, draw it up in the computer. I'll cross check and just make sure I know where my, uh, my center of lift is, where uh, I'm basing everything off of. Then I'll adjust the brackets to fine tune it. But just lifting the bike up with a couple of us, we're within inches of where it's gonna be. So I'll draft it in the computer and I don't want to be within inches, I want it to be exact. The idea is, with motorcycles, without motorcycles, I am not changing my center of gravity. And I could leave a motorcycle at a cabin, load up the same way, go home, or vice versa. With or without bikes, center of lift, uh, CG line will not change. So I'll draw it on the computer. We got some work to do, but right now, bad work. We're gonna go play. <laughs> Let's go, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome! I love it! <laughs> Ron, you're so noisy up there. Hi, everybody! <laughs> Dylan's doing it the hard way. He has to earn it. <laughs> hey, Ron. Yeah. We're doing it the old man way. <laughs> yes. But it's so fun! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Woohoo! I really should have a helmet on. <laughs> we thought we were going for like a 30 second ride and then we just kept going and then ended up on the mountain. We'll have helmets next time. Helmets and pads next time. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, been going for several hours. We finally hit half charge. So hey Ron, I like your shirt. Absolutely. The, the yeah, back to work. <laughs> back but to not work. today. Exactly like <laughs> we made it to the top. <laughs> Woo! Now there's another top. It's over there. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I found the top of another hill. <laughs> oh, it's fun. All right, so what we're doing now on the motorcycle mount brackets, I've got the brackets that can hold and support all the weight in a four. I've actually got it beyond 5G loads on a gas powered, he much heavier motorcycle. So the electric bike is the electric motorcycle, piece of cake. Now that I've got the loads that support the weight that pulls straight down, I need to carry the loads from keeping the bike from swinging. I didn't want a motorcycle that I hung upside down that would drain oil, gas, be a mess. Also, I didn't want to be out in the dirt somewhere and trying to flip a motorcycle over onto its handlebars. 
So the way I've designed it is the motorcycles go straight up. You lift the back tire only, so you're not having to lift the whole bike. You hook it. Of course, Scrappy, we can lower the suspension completely flat to the ground, so we're only lifting it a little ways. And then lift the front up, quick pin it. Now we need something to keep the handlebars from turning and the bike from swinging. And since we already have handlebars on the bike and the bike's upright, that gives a really wide stance. So I'm using the handlebar so I don't need to do a separate brace to the bottom of the bike to keep it from swinging. I've just drawn in the computer some stiffener brackets that are gonna go in as embeds. So if I rotate this around, you can see my main machine ribs that we machined all out of billet aluminum and I've strengthened them up for the motorcycles specifically at this point. And I've made these brackets that will bridge across the top and inside the wing so that the handlebar where it makes contact with the wing with the quick release bracket is actually tied to two primary billet aluminum ribs with a spanner and then a connecting point on the outside of the skin. So these go inside. I've made these little template plates that match those bolt patterns since it's all drawn on the computer. I'll tape those up, I'll center punch them, drill out the holes, install these inside the wing, and when the bike goes up, I'll have a quick connect that grab the handlebars at the full wide connection and hold the bottom of the bike from swinging. So I'll actually have the back attachment, the front attachment, two handlebar attachments, each one of them designed to hold more than the load of the bike with the G rating of heavy, heavy, severe turbulence. Come on over here, I'll show you what I'm doing right here. So these are the two front brackets and I've got the tubes now set in the middle hole and then I'll use the calipers to set the exact compression here and then I'll weld all this out. Take these bolts out and this is where this long pin, actually it hangs this way from the aircraft, this, this end hangs off the structural bracket I built into the wing. Then this end, I've got this compression tube here. So as I hang the motorcycle, it doesn't try and pull down and flex these two side plates in with the weight. So it's just a little compression joint, makes it really solid. So I'll weld that all up. So that is the front of the motorcycle. This is the back of the motorcycle. I'm putting it together. And um, these aluminum rivets are just temporary. So you can see I've drilled these holes big, but if you look down inside them, they're uh, ready for just a rosette uh, filled in weld so I can get to the bottom. I'll burn out the edges. I've cut all these long so I can trim them off and sand them perfect. So right now, we're just gonna quickly pop these rivets, tie it together temporarily, and then uh, weld it out. And then these rivets, once I get all these rosette welds filled, since I don't want to rely on rivets, I'll go ahead and drill them out like I have on this one, where I've gone through both pieces of metal. You can see it sanded. And now I'll rosette weld that, pull these rivets, weld them all the way along. So it'll be all rosette welded and end welded. So we got a bit more work to do, a few more hours to get this done. Back to work. All right, getting closer on the motorcycle mount brackets. So what I've got, this is a front bracket. I'll show how that hooks to the motorcycle later, but basically it's gonna be as simple as lifting up the back tire, hooking the back tire in a rear bracket um, that still needs its spacers. And then this is a front bracket, but the rear tire will slide up into a slot that's the exact size to kind of squeeze the rubber. And then a pin slides through the bracket and this will have a machined aluminum um, bar on it, solid bar with a rubber bushing. So basically you'll just lift the back tire of one of the motorcycles up into a back slot and pin it and it rubber isolates. Then you'll lift the front up and this will capture the front and hook onto two main frames of the motorcycle and you simply slide this pin through and put a retaining clip pin through it kind of like on a trailer hitch receiver. It's just a spring loaded clip. So it's two pins to hold the motorcycle and then there's two rubber straps that grab the handlebars and keep them straight and the bike from swinging. So it'll be riveted for now, but the way I'm making this stronger, as you can see, I've made these little mini parts right here and they hold this pipe through the metal. It's machined exactly right. Tapered edges, if you look real close, 
The way we'll put this in, this should be a snug fit and it will have to barely bend it apart, slide that down. Now, this, I'll bolt it here and here. I'll weld this all together, weld these joints together here. And then where the bike motorcycle pin goes through, I've doubled, doubled it up to a quarter inch where the wear would be through that side hole. So I've got to go ahead and get this bolted up, welded, get it on the bike, on the airplane, hang a bike. You know the drill. Let's get back to work. All the parts are now powder coated, ready to go on the plane. It's extremely lightweight. I'll probably just leave these mounted to the aircraft all the time. It's only gonna take me about 15 minutes to bolt it up, but I kind of think I'm gonna pack these motorcycles around with me a lot. So I'll likely leave them on, but we'll see. Let's stick them on right now. Let's see how the motorcycles fit. <laughs> it's our exercise program. Look at those gyros. Gyros, I tell you, you still got seven trims, boss. You never be thin. All right, guys, it's time to throw some motorcycles on here. Right now, this is a bit high of a lift um, to get the motorcycles up, so we're gonna drop it down. But these brackets are all done, ready to go. <laughs> of course, I weigh twice the weight of the electric motorcycles, um, but uh, these are designed to handle the electric and full size, so we're ready to go. Hopefully it won't be too hard to put on. Let's get it. All right, we've got the plane lowered for load the motorcycle mode. What's up? So we got everything installed. You can see how solid this is. It is absolutely locked on. Um, and these black brackets are also locked back with a 45 degree brace. So the top can't move at all in either location. And then the bottom of the bike can't move because of the handlebar. So we've got that all done. There was a lot of weight added to Scrappy to be able to do this. I needed to be able to do it safely, not an afterthought. So this main rib up in here, this support bracket has holes all the way through it, is designed to put any bracket anywhere I want and pick up all the load. This actually goes up and ties into a truss web that is designed to pick up the load at any point. It had to end up being 45 rather than a box out uh, rib. I needed to pick it up and make it a beam that carries from this spar to this spar. So this was designed specifically for these motorcycles and heavier, but also at any point I can quickly unbolt this and attach anything. I don't know what else we could put on it here. We could do the fuel pods, who knows? Maybe a couple of little stand-up single jet skis. Um, I don't know, I bet some of you have some great ideas. Tell me what you think I should attach to this subframe if I'm not hauling motorcycles. I don't know, maybe a couple little jetpack rockets. <laughs> The load is absolutely secure. I'm not worried about going into a heavy slip into the wind. It'll act as a great break if I need to come down. Uh, some may ask, well, what do you do about the batteries at high altitude? Scrappy can go up over 20,000 feet. We could have 50 below zero. If I was gonna do that or it's winter, I may go ahead and just take the batteries out. Fortunately, what I did is I made a quick connect plug so the motorcycles can actually charge while I fly. There's 18 solar panels on Scrappy. It can charge both motorcycles simultaneously in route. And if the sun weren't out, I can flip one switch inside the cabin and I can have the engine recharge the motorcycles. 
So I have two sources of power to keep the motorcycles charged up, but if it's really cold, I would just go ahead and slide the batteries out. I've got a spot for them inside the aircraft in a conditioned environment where I'm not worried about the temperature. We can put both batteries in the luggage compartment. They have dedicated ports to charge, so I can charge the batteries in a temperature controlled environment and then go ride all I want when I get to the destination. The next thing that a lot of you might ask is how much drag is this going to add to the aircraft? Well, actually, it's a staggering amount. You would think that it's in line and it's streamlined, and it is, but everything about the tire, the spokes, the shape of the front of this cooling plate, and everything behind it, it is going to be a mess of drag. So I do want to fly it just the way it is, and we're going to do a drag calculation and just figure out how much more power it takes to hold the same speed that Scrappy is capable of doing without the motorcycles. And once we get that, and we can fly like that, Scrappy's got plenty of horsepower, just burn a little more fuel to go the same speed. Guaranteed it's going to burn more fuel to do the same speed. But we got lots of power in the tank left over to do it. But likely at some point i'll either do a stretch bag that goes over it who knows i could make a quick connect carbon fiber actual airfoil that came back to a point i could knock that out real fast so let's just see what the drag does it's going to be a lot one other thing i'll show you right on the other side of the motorcycle is two big bright led blue lights they're tied in two on this side two on that side they're tied into a sensor on the earth x lithium batteries which is really cool feature EarthX has set it up to have a computer module inside that keeps all the charging perfect, keeps everything truly balanced. They're a great battery. I've been using them forever and I absolutely love it. But what's great about the light feature is it has a wire pigtail coming out of the battery and I've tied it in to some bright lights that sit under my wing. And if there's any problem with the batteries at all, it puts up a warning indicator. That doesn't mean that the battery is suddenly going to have some massive problem, but if there's anything that is not quite perfect, it's going to let you know so you can get it checked out. So what I did is I put them both in the cabin and on the outside of the aircraft so I can monitor all my batteries and have a warning light pop up if anything isn't quite right. So on the outside of Scrappy, I've got them on the wings. That is actually so that during a pre-flight, before I even get airborne or turn on a panel, when I'm walking the pre-flight of the aircraft, even with the system turned off, those lights will come on and there's enough battery in here that it could run those lights literally for a year. So if I walk around the plane and I see a bright blue, blue light, I know I have something to check out. Put your questions in the comments. For now, let's get back to work. Will someone start up? Let's go fly it. <laughs> I'd love to go fly today, but the wind's picking up. Uh, I don't know when I'll get a chance, because unfortunately, though the project's done and I'm ready to go play, I gotta leave town all over the Western US traveling for the next way too long. So, Scrappy's gonna have to wait, but we'll get a flying soon, you know the drill. Back to work.